Hello, my name is Danae Doris and I am the project manager for the American Clearinghouse and Educational Facilities. I would like to thank you for listening to our podcast today entitled, How to Connect Your Mission and Vision to Your Educational Environment. ASEF is the Educational Facilities Clearinghouse funded by the United States Department of Education, established to provide technical assistance, training, and resources to public early childhood schools, K-12 schools, and institutions of higher education. ASEF provides resources on facility planning, design, financing, construction, improvement, operation, and maintenance. We invite you to follow ASEF online at acefacilities.org and also encourage you to join the network of professionals already following the educational facilities discussions on Facebook, Twitter, and Blogger. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Mrs. Bobby McDonald. Mrs. McDonald is currently the Executive Director for the City Neighbors Foundation in Baltimore City, Maryland. Throughout her career, Ms. McDonald has served as an instructor, consultant, and education advocate dedicated to the transformation of urban education. Again, it is my honor to present to you Ms. Bobby McDonald. Thank you for sharing your expertise with our audience today. Thank you, Dr. Doris, for the introduction. Every school has a vision of the child and a mission that is evident in the practices of that school, in the culture, and in the learning spaces. When you walk in the front door of your school, look around. What is on the walls, the floors, what furniture is available? What is the message that greets you? You can tell looking around the environment what is important here. What does the school value? How will you be treated? In this session, how to connect your mission and vision to your educational environment, we have three main goals. Number one, to identify the connection between the mission and vision of your school and the educational environment to suggest a design process that allows your stakeholders to have voice and ownership in the creation of the educational environment. And finally, I'm going to share low-cost solutions for shaping your educational environment. There is a problem with learning spaces today. Learning spaces are connected to your philosophy. Our philosophy is based on the belief that the environment matters, that learning is a social event, and that the educational spaces contribute to relationships in a school. In the 1940s, pioneering Italian teacher and psychologist Loris Malaguzzi founded the Reggio Emilia approach to learning on the premise that children develop through interactions, first with the adults in their lives, parents and teachers, then with their peers, and ultimately with the environment around them. Environment, said Malaguzzi, is the third teacher. If this is so, then every color, texture, piece of furniture, design of spaces, and the very floors and walls that are part of the environment contribute to the teaching of children. Another important thought leader in the world of education, of course, was John Dewey, Jean Piaget, Lev Vygotsky, and others have contributed to our understanding on how children construct meaning. Through real experiences, collaboration, the sharing of ideas, mistakes, questions, revisions, students construct knowledge in a social realm. So learning is a social event. Educational spaces contribute to the development of relationships. Where and when do we connect with the people in our school? Where do we communicate our deeply held beliefs? Do the walls reflect who we are? Are there places to sit and talk, meet and gather, create community? Every inch of a school contributes or detracts from the relationships we have with each other, with instruction, with culture, with our mission and vision. Every school has the opportunity to embrace this understanding that the environment matters, that learning is socially constructed, and that educational spaces contribute to relations. Look closely at how your learning spaces and educational environment impact the success of your school. I'm going to talk a little bit about our approach. We founded our schools in Baltimore on the question, if you could have the best school you can imagine, what would it be? And then we made the work of our school for everyone involved to be continually asking and answering that question. In this way, we're calling upon the teachers, students, administrators, parents, and community to use their imagination, to be creative in their thinking. The idea that a school is being imagined together creates real ownership and inspiration. When it comes to the design of the space, we apply the same principle. Create opportunities for stakeholders to stand in the spaces of your school and imagine together. I'm suggesting a series of planning conversations that will lead you and your community 
to making the connection between your mission and vision and your educational environment. It's important to facilitate these conversations in a way that allows for real input by all stakeholders. Here's a few guidelines for these facilitated conversations. Number one, start with your mission and vision. Do you see your school as a place that connects people, allows for real relationships, builds community? Where is that evident in the environment? How do we imagine that looks in our space? Number two, make it real. If there's a budget, let everyone know what it is. Number three, start with your ideals. What do you believe about children? Are they imaginative, creative, messy? How about teachers, parents? What do you want the environment to convey? Is this a place where every student will be known, loved, and supported academically? Then design your space to answer that question. Dream of a space that allows each person in the school to do their best work together. Number four, allow your team to dream together. Ask participants to find pictures and examples of spaces that inspire. Go visit other schools together. Let go of the expected and embrace the new ideas of your group. Imagine a space that allows your school to be extraordinary. And number five, be explicit about what is driving your design decisions. Every decision has a belief driving it, and usually, for institutions, economies of scale or surfaces that are easily sanitized drive major design decisions. This makes sense at some level. In a hospital, where the mission and vision of the institution is around serving many people as quickly and efficiently as possible, an environment designed to handle health concerns. But what is your school designed for? Is it a hospital, a factory, a place to control crowds of people? Make sure you prioritize mission and vision before economies of scale. Is your decision to use tile in your school based on cost, easily cleaned surfaces, or because that is the usual way schools look? What is the impact of using tile rather than carpet squares in the school lobby? If you have decided that the environment matters and is essential to your success, then you and your community have to focus on letting your mission and vision drive your decisions when it comes to designing your educational environment. Here are a few suggestions for gathering the stakeholder groups. Involve parents. Parents should think about the spaces they are using the most. The lobby, the parent room, the office. As soon as a parent walks up to the front door, they are receiving messages about how to behave, what the school values, and what they are expected to contribute. The process of working with parents to connect the space to your ideals will increase the ownership of parents and lead to an environment that builds community. But most importantly, the entire conversation needs to stem from your mission and vision. This is an opportunity for parents to feel a part of creating the school in partnership. Is there a space for parents to gather, formal and informal meeting spaces? Now for teachers, usually you would just let them focus on their classrooms, the hallways, the gathering spaces. One of the most wonderful conversations you can have with teachers is the one where you call together your faculty and ask them, in your classroom, how do you want to be with the students? What different areas do you need to teach the way you really want to teach? Would you need a couch, breakout spaces, conferencing areas? Where does it make sense for you to put your desk? Are you at the front of the room as though on stage? In the back corner of the room like the captain of a motorboat? To teach the way we believe, what do you need in this space to support you and the students? Students care passionately about the places where they have the most freedom usually the lunchroom or the playground or the hallways. Conduct a series of conversations with the students and let them dream up the things that would make them feel empowered and lead to the kind of learning and culture that you're creating together. Students can design their own cafeterias. They can help create spaces within the hallways. Both of these areas can be beautiful and have features that you might not have thought of on your own, like a stage, for example. Allowing students to contribute will contribute to your culture of empowerment and relationships. Of course, consider the environment. What exactly is the environment? It is everything from the flooring to the lighting, the walls, the furniture, the gathering spaces, and the grounds. You can break up the environment in many ways. One simple way to consider the environment would be by space available, classrooms, hallways, community spaces. Find ways to allow the environment to enhance teaching and learning and reflect your beliefs. Here's just a few of the ways that we can suggest. 
Choose beautiful colors when painting rooms and halls. Don't feel obligated to use typical school colors or primary colors. Use colors you would use in a home, but definitely choose a color scheme that is simple, elegant, and is school-wide. The colors in a school need to resonate and connect the spaces. Don't be afraid to use deep, beautiful colors or have accent walls in classrooms, but be sure to consider the natural light and the feeling that people will have who use the space every day. Add glass between hallways and classrooms to open up the environment and make the hall an extension of the classroom. Adding glass contributes to a feeling of trust and transparency. Teachers are able to passively supervise students who may be working in the hallways and the classrooms become connected to the life of the school. We ask teachers not to cover up the glass and to really give it a chance to do its intended work. It takes some getting used to. Glass is fragile. By including glass in the environment, there's a feeling of trust and respect that is palpable in our schools. The glass is about relationships. Teaching and learning become public and the work of the school is on display. And the glass is one way that you can communicate in the school regarding your mission and your vision. Another suggestion is to use ample gallery lighting and permanent display boards. It's very simple. When you create a display area, simply add a strip of gallery lighting and suddenly a blank wall has an art gallery feel. This conveys a message that the work displayed is highly valued and worth the spotlighting. If you have space, add a bench or an ottoman for folks to sit and view the work and promote the gallery feel even further. Bring in natural elements. For example, cover sterile tiles with planks of stained wood. If your school building has a majority of cinder block or tiled walls, this can contribute to a feeling of being in a shower or a prison. I'm not suggesting we need to knock it all down or even cover it all up, but if you walk down the hallways and it gives you that institutional feel, there is a great inexpensive way to modify this. Simply choose key walls or spaces and bolt strips of stained lumber. The approximate size may be like a 2 by 8 to create a different message and a visual break from the monotony of the repetitive cinder blocks and tiles. Choose a beautiful stain. You can just use simple pine wood and simply bolt the planks to the wall. We are advocating for you to consider that this inexpensive simple fix will contribute so much to the feel and message of your school that we can't underestimate its importance. Wood is a natural material that connects us to nature. Wood reflects light and provokes a feeling of warmth. Create places to sit comfortably and work in the halls. Most school hallways are designed simply for passage between classrooms and to hold the lockers of the students. Many schools have hallway cultures that include rushing, teasing, and fighting, leading to the need for hall monitors. The hallways become all about controlled behavior, but they could be so much more. The behavior of students and teachers in the hallways are an important indicator of school culture. The passage between classes, where students have freedom and are not being directly supervised, can exemplify the culture that exists in a school. Likewise, when teachers lead students through the hallway with attempted complete control of their bodies and minds, that's pretty telling as well. When the hallways are straight pass-throughs with cold, hard surfaces, the message of what is expected is clear in terms of behavior and expectations. But if we dream a little bit together, what could the hallways be? The idea here is twofold. Expand the use of the hallways to be instructional space where students can work independently or in groups, and allow the hallways of your school to contribute to the ideals of your mission and vision. Bring in different textures, colors, surfaces, soft curves that change the message and the use of this important space. Furnish with living room furniture. Move the lockers out of the usual rows if you can. Create comfortable, inviting places to work. You can build in benches and add couches, chairs, carpeted areas with pillows. Stand at one end of your longest hallway and consider is there a way to break up the monotony of long halls with different color paints, carpets, built-in archways? Just changing the flooring in one section will contribute to creating areas rather than pass-throughs. I'm going to give you some low-cost tips. Furnish rooms and halls with commercial-grade furniture. Research local hotel liquidators. Every year, hotel furniture liquidation happens when companies sell new or used hotel furniture from overstock or if a hotel is going out of business. 
Usually, these companies have warehouses where the public can shop. Liquidated furniture like couches, chairs, tables, desks are considered lightly used, are often commercial grade, and can be bought for much lower rates than new furniture. Find one near you. Swing by every week until you find the furniture you need. Use idea paint rather than buying framed whiteboards and surround them with home soap boards. Idea paint can create a whiteboard from the bottom of the wall to the very top and it's amazing what that does to contribute to the feeling of creative thinking in a classroom. Now home soap is a brand name associated with the product generally known um, as wallboard. It's made from recycled paper that's compressed under high temperatures it's about a half an inch thick and comes in sheets four by eight. You can install homosote as a wall covering and it doubles as a type of cork board. Please check with the fire marshal if you plan to use extensively as there is a certain rating that must be retained throughout the building. It can be repeatedly repainted and it makes hanging the work of students easy as you can staple, velcro, thumbtack, and nail right into the board easily. You can cover parts of your walls and classrooms and hallways with homosote, making the display of student work easy. And as the teachers might want to document and show the process of the students' thinking, revisions of the project, they can easily add as they go to any display space being used. Use carpet squares. Carpet squares are great. You can replace them as needed and they create such a soft, welcoming flooring that students can sit on and even stretch out with laptops. Homes have carpeting for this reason. It is beautiful, warm, and welcoming. We can have our hallways and classrooms share those qualities. Having a mixture of wood, vinyl plank tiles, and carpeting creates this message, this home-like feel in your school. It's amazing the difference it can make. Please, if you're going to do this, don't choose carpet squares that look like they should be in an airport or a doctor's office. Pick out a pattern and deep, beautiful colors that give a home-like feel. Another important thing you can do is to create gathering spaces. Look over every area of your campus and facility for potential gathering spaces. Here's a few examples. Right outside the entrance to your school, is there a chance to create an outdoor stage that invites the community to gather, watch movies, watch performances? To invite the comfortable seating of an audience, you can create a small patio right in front of that stage. Hopefully you have some lawn seating. What was once a blank wall facing the neighbors could become a community space that brings beauty and a feeling of invitation and welcoming to all who approach your school. If you have any kind of outdoor space, you can create a little patio feel just by getting a few picnic tables and putting them together, or a circle of logs and tree stumps, or a gathering of boulders. All of these kinds of materials are relatively inexpensive or can be donated with a little bit of asking around. Where and when can the parents and students of your school gather outside in an informal way? Find those places. Give folks something to sit on. And if you can, add something beautiful to ponder, like a mosaic or a statue, a sign, or anything else that's symbolic of your school's mission and vision. Town squares are important. Great communities have a place to gather, to work, to laugh, to pursue happiness. Your school community needs this space as well. Look for the unique spaces in your school. Find ways to create town squares or nooks or plazas by changing the flooring, the walls, or the lighting. Think creatively about the possibilities and let the beauty of your school shine through. For example, right in the middle of a long hallway, you can just simply change the flooring, add some seating, and change the lighting. In just that small way, it'll be an invitation as a place to gather. This is a suggestion for you. Clocks are important in a school. Usually every single classroom has one. One way to build ownership and contribute to the beauty of your school is allow your teachers to pick out the clock that they like best. Give them a budget, let them find a clock online, and order it for them. In this way, you might have clocks inspired by artists, cities, sports teams. What you'll really get out of this practice is an inexpensive way to allow the authentic tastes and preferences of your faculty be reflected in the design of the classroom. This practice allows teachers to share who they are with their students and with each other. Relationships, the role of the teacher, all are affected by a simple practice that makes teachers feel ownership and empowered in their own classrooms. There are many factors that inspire the heart of a great school. The educational environment is not an end to itself. The educational environment does contribute and plays a significant role in creating the conditions that will allow your mission and vision to thrive. Have fun with this process. 
dream together, and allow your team to feel inspired to create. Thank you. Thank you for listening to our podcast today. We hope that you take this opportunity to learn from the content presented and add to your professional knowledge of transforming the educational environment to connect with your mission and vision. ASEF would like to extend a very special thank you to our presenter, Bobby McDonald, and to you for listening to our podcast today. We hope you will join us again soon. Please remember to visit our website at acefacilities.org to access other learning events and follow us on your preferred social media outlet. Please take a moment to complete the podcast evaluation at the ASEF website on the bottom of the learning events page. We value your opinion and look forward to hearing your feedback.